Oh, hello there. My name's Ben, and this is a Shots Fired Airsoft video. And today, I have an unboxing for you of the Raven Dragon 7 High Capper. Now, this is a massive box. Um, it's not yet been opened, so I this is essentially my first impression of this RAF. Um, just to let you know, I am a huge fan of the larger pistols. Essentially, if it looks so phallic that you think you have to wipe it on the curtains before you put it back in the case, then I'm into it. So, just for example, uh, here is my favourite sidearm of choice. The WE Dragon 7. Oddly enough, it has the same name, which is a bit weird. Just for size reference, here is a Army Armament R17, which is a standard, very budget model of a G17 and as you can see the difference in size is remarkable. So why the Raven High Capper? Now there are a couple of reasons I wanted to review this. As I've already mentioned it's something that would fit into my loadout or my gameplay style. I tend to be almost pistol primary. I run a pistol most of the time. I play CQB and uh, I finally get one with my playstyle the best. I do like a heavier pistol, a larger pistol, um, although the uh, things like the R17 and that are very light and very manoeuvrable, I tend to find that the more deliberate movements required by something like the Dragon 7, either from Raven or WE, is pretty much my preferred weight and feel in the hand. The other reason for reviewing the Raven is they don't really have a good reputation. On forums, you would be led to believe that they are almost as bad in terms of reliability as Donald Trump's Twitter account is actually outputting any sort of truth or accurate information. I'm here to see if this is a fair view of the gun, or whether it's simply the most displeased shout the loudest. So here we go, like I said, the box is massive, it's heavy. Uh, this is a chrome uh, version of this pistol. We don't actually have very much information on the box with regards to the gun, although we do have, <laughs> in my light ring there, a little picture of the pistol, although that does appear to be sort of a 5.1, one more than anything. Uh, on the back, you just essentially get told to read the instructions enclosed, it tells you what it is, and it has a large amount of information in French but not in English so whether we, we do find out it's an air soft gun slide the sleeve off put that to the side and we just have a very basic blue box but it's really thick you aren't really rather than that we pop the lid off and there we go so the first thing we see is an individual sheet which has an exploded diagram on it which in my lights is not the best in terms of visibility and in fact when I look at it it's quite difficult to see but it is there it's a very important part of any um, airsoft weapon and it will allow you to actually see what you are supposed to see when you take your gun apart for maintenance and then we have what looks like a very well produced manual Again, we have a picture of a high capper on the front. It's not this particular one. Uh, but inside, it does appear to be mainly just to save the information and a bit of information as to what the uh, various, various features of the gun. Moving along, we get a nice patch, which is, seems to be lovely quality. Uh, Velcro backed. So it should go straight onto any velcro you have on your gear or hat or anything or wool. We have some screws, which may well be for mounting, uh, looking at them, may well be for mounting sights. I'm not entirely sure we'll look into that later. Like I said, this is an unboxing. I haven't looked at this box before. We have a spare nozzle. Now, I see a lot of people saying that this is just a spare nozzle. However, I think that this 
is supposed to be used if you use a CO2 magazine for this. Um, I will have to check up on that and I'll let you know during the review. Uh, but I think that is what it is actually for. A lot of the issues with this gun do appear to be centered around the nozzle, um, which can cause some issues, they break. And a lot of people swap to this nozzle thinking it's just a spare, and actually it's a strengthened one for CO2, which is why they last quite well on the second nozzle. So going in a bit deeper, we have a full gasket set, which I'm sorry if the glow of my light stops from seeing it. Essentially it's all the O-rings for the pistol, which is very nice actually. Right, uh, the other thing that's in here is a magazine. And just have a bit of oil on there. We have what looks like a removable base plate if we push in there. Uh, it's not the best action. The spring seems nice and taut though, so it should feed well. It's a square flat gas router. Uh, if I just grab the WE mag. Right, the W mag obviously on the left and the Raven on the right. We have a slightly different opening in the gas router. Beefier feed lips on the WE and quite different in terms of style of output valve on the magazine. So you see that's a large round and that's more like a pin has pushed. The base plates are very similar and so are the feed valves, slightly different color perhaps. Uh, if I just take the uh, Raven one, I believe we'll give it a go. It does indeed go in, locks back, although there's no gas in it so it won't fire. But so it does look like it is a fit for the uh, WE, which is handy. So anyway, here's the moment we've all been waiting for, the actual Dragon 7. Well, the first thing I noticed on picking up, just happened to notice, is the sheer amount of fixings we've got on the frame and the compensator at the front. Uh, this is a split slide design, like the WE. This means that only the back portion of the slide moves. Um, gun has lubrication on it at the box. Magazine release feels okay. Extended slide release which is nice, I must admit. Extended thumb safety. So we can't pull the slide back. Uh, beaver tail safety. So you can't pull the trigger until you press that in and then pull the trigger. We've got pretty standard iron sights, sort of standard high cap style. And we do have an imitation fiber optic sight on the front. Hmm. If you want to slice any vegetables, I recommend doing it on the front of the compensator. Not particularly impressed with the finish on that. I think you probably, if you drag that across your skin hard enough, you probably cut yourself pretty well. Uh, the gun itself is really, really light. Um, I'm amazed at how light it is. Is this a good thing or a bad thing? Um, I guess we'll probably find out in the review. It is a lot lighter. An awful lot lighter in the hand compared to the WE. Although you'll see that they are very, very similar in terms of length, um, similar in terms of features. So they have, with say, essentially all the standard sort of long, high capper style features that you would expect. Similar skeletonized hammer, similar sights. So if you just give me a sec, I will grab the scales out and see what we're looking at here. Okay, so here we go. We've got our little kitchen scales out, and first of all, I'm going to put the Raven on. And we have a bear weight of 637, 636, 637 grams. And with the magazine in, this is the Raven magazine, which fits in quite nice. It wasn't the smoothest. Uh, we have an all up weight of just under a kilogram. Um, which is quite light for a gun of this size. So if you have maybe smaller hands or a longer, younger player, uh, this actually might be a good 
uh, replacement for the WE if you find that a bit handy or heavy sorry other thing you notice that I didn't originally notice is we actually have uh, pre-tapped holes in the frame for a high capper style sight mount which is an advantage over the WE it does not have that so yeah uh, just out of interest I'm gonna put the Dragon 7 on I've never weighed it before so we'll see it that ways okay so the the bear dragon is nearly 200 grams heavier than the raven and if we just put its mag in uh, we see that jumps up to nearly 1200 grams so 1.2 kilograms so this is a very heavy pistol okay so what i've got here is i've got the raven i've got the raven magazine with a bit of gas in it and i also have a we extended high kappa mag uh, so I'm just going to see what this is like. Uh, pop the mag in. Uh, the mag took gas great, although there was none in it when it originally came, which is usually a sign that it might leak because the maintenance gas that they usually put in uh, wasn't in there for whatever reason. Either Raven don't or New Pro don't do it, or um, well, the other theory is it leaks out whilst it's in the box. So I'll pop that in there. It does lock back perfectly fine. Pop that forward. I'm just going to hold the release down just so we can get a couple of shots off. That's lovely and it locks back great. So that's the first test out of the way. And here is the WE extended mag. It does go in, doesn't feel quite as secure, but it isn't coming out. And it does release, but you have to give it quite a punt on the uh, magazine release. So I'm just going to pop that forward. Mm, that's interesting. It didn't cycle properly. Let me just go and try putting a bit more gas in this mag. Okay, so we're back with the... This is absolutely ram-packed full of gas now. Make sure that's in. Pop it back. Oh, sorry, not the camera. It doesn't like the WE mag. That is interesting. Pop that back in there, make sure I didn't bugger it up. No, it's fine. So that is interesting. It does not appear to like WE Max. It's a bit of a shame. Uh, I'm just going to have a look at what is entailed getting this compensator off so we can release the slide and have a look at the underside of the slide internals. Uh, if you bear with me, I'll be back in a sec. Okay, so a bit of a jump. We've got the Dragon 7 in bits. My first impressions of it in terms of actually taking it apart. Um, very complex to actually tear down. As I say complex, you undo a few screws. But to get in there, obviously you've got your standard slide release, as well as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws in the nose to get these two parts off, obviously the front of the slide and your compensator. Um, this is not ideal if you want to get in quickly to change the hop, however, realistically, on these, once the hop set for the ammo you're using, you should generally be okay. Uh, just for comparison, the Dragon is one, two, three, four, and the whole front end comes off. So, um, it's easier to get into, I will admit. On first impressions, this feels quality compared um, whether the Vorsk version of the Raven feels like this does um, or not I can't tell you at the moment I may end up getting a Vorsk provided nothing dramatically goes haywire with the Raven uh, just because I know they share similar internals so if one is going to break then the other ones may also break however I haven't seen that many reviews on the Vorsk so it might be quite interesting to find out to get further into this, uh, we have the frame, which is exceptionally light. Uh, this, it does, it is metal, this, obviously plastic guards. But nice stippling on the uh, hand grips. And this does appear to be molded. Um, so I don't think you can actually, you can take the frame out of there, but I don't think you can change these separately. So it is a one piece grip. 
uh, you've got grip on the front, grip on the back, there's grip on the front of the trigger guard. Um, and it, it does seem to be you know, pretty damn good. The actual trigger itself is a very short pull and a very short reset. And the, the, yeah, the frame's not the end of the world. You see I'm getting grease all over it. This does actually have grease in it as well. It's not just like a light silicon oil that's going to evaporate the moment you use it. Fairly standard spring and guide rod. Again, this is all metal, so you might want to keep it looped as that's running through there. You might end up with a bit of excessive wear you know, where it touches the hob unit. The slider nozzle assembly itself, really quite light. Um, you see the piston base and the plunger there, there's quite a lot of lubrication in there. Uh, oh, moves nice and freely. Uh, I say that the metal isn't the nicest feeling in the world. Then again, none of these cheaper guns really are. I would imagine we probably have the same bolt in the back and bolt under the sight that most of the high captors tend to have. Uh, the barrel assembly I found very interesting. One of the things about the WE version of the Dragon was it actually took me quite a long time to get us a tracer onto the front of it, which really, CQB I play in dark environments, so it's really handy to have a tracer. And you're at a bit of a disadvantage if you don't, because everyone else does run one. Um, so I ended up with this, which is a 12 mil clockwise adapter. Um, to go into this obviously gives you a 14 mil negative thread um, this fits the barrel uh, the interesting thing about this is that the dragon 7 is one of the very few guns i've ever seen pistols because most we stuff is 11 mil um clockwise um, and that's what your x core tech minis and all that come with and then you swap to the 14 negative because uh, they're primarily a a stubby pistol tracer. This is the only ever gun I have seen with that size of barrel thread and I'm suspicious because it almost seems to me like certain parts of this gun are similar to the WE you might say. Um, I don't have time at the moment to take the WE apart really to compare the two in the barrels. I'll probably save that for a review. Um, You'll be interested to see if they're a similar size. The hop-up unit is slightly different. Um, as to whether they were interchanged or not, I will have to find out. Um, but again, that will also be in the review. It does have 45 ACP on the top, which is nice. But apart from that, it's very, very similar. Um, again, the material is not the nicest, but it is light. A lot of this gun is very light. Um, probably explains the nearly 300 grams of missing mass over the WE. Anyway, so that's been my unboxing and sort of brief first look at the Raven Dragon 7. I'm quite interested to see, get some rounds through it and see how it fires and compare it to my WE. So I've been Ben, thank you very much for watching. This was a Shots Fired Airsoft video and stay tuned for the review and the Cybergun P90 that are coming up very shortly.